When I speak about Jezebel and homosexuals and lesbians, I don't play games. That is my enemy. That's my God's enemy. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit, the stronghold even over homosexuality. The Jezebel spirit is the one who's, to, who's changing the roles around in a household. Man become a woman and woman become a man. That is that spirit speciality. I mean, where the children become homosexuals because of confusion and perversion. The stronghold even of homosexuality is the spirit of Jezebel. Hallelujah. Pray, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You are my victory. Give your Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says, we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Say the blood of the Lamb. Can you see what Santa Claus is doing? You know, Satan can create nothing. Nothing. They say Satan can write songs. He cannot. He's not the creator. No angel is a creator. The only ones that's created in the image and the likeness of God is humans. And we can create because of God's ability that is within us. That's why we can create cars. We can build houses. We can create gardens. A, a devil cannot, a, not even an angel can write a song. But what about these songs that the people write? They're Satanist. It is them writing the songs. Satan is using their gifts. Satan cannot create nothing. An angel, I don't speak that bad about the angels. I mean, they've got a different purpose than creating. God is the creator. Give him a hand. I mean, the humans are created. We are created in his image and his likeness. We can create cars. An angel cannot create a car. He cannot. It's not his ability. He's not the creator. He is there to obey God's commandments. The angels are awesome beings. They got their own gifts. They are awesome because they stand in the presence of the Lord. And, 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 and I salute them and I honor them. I give the honor which belongs to them, but I give the greater honor to God. I mean, we never worship angels. We never command angels. That's a sin. There's one commander of the angels, the Bible says. And that is the captain of heaven, the general, Jesus Christ. Give him a hand. People get into the worship of angels and get carried away by angels. I tell you what the Bible says. You are not a commander of the angels. God is the commander of the angels. No one else. Give God a hand. Will the angels act on my prayer? For sure. Because if I pray, God send them. He is the only one that commands angels. Amen. In Jesus' name. So you heard a couple of things. You're not a Roman Catholic, so it's not Christ Mass. Amen. We don't believe in Santa Claus because he's a copy. Satan can create nothing. So the red represents Jesus on the white horse, his robe dipped in blood. Satan can create nothing. That's why he always even create God is free. He even, create, he even copy that. That's why you will get the Antichrist, you'll get the beast and the false prophet. He copy everything that God is doing. Like a hyena as, as, as a wannabe lion. I, 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 I wish I was a lion. That's why in nature, that is a perfect example of holiness and evil. A hyena is one of the most evil animals there is. It's a representative of Jezebel and her work. God made everything perfect. There was no killing. In his creation, before Satan took over. Who gave creation, the authority of creation to, to, to Satan, the destroyer? Our ancestor Adam, when he listened to his wife. And Satan was clever. He became to the weaker one. He did not come to Adam. He came to Eve, deceiving Eve, sowing the seed of doubt. Sometimes I say things in a service three or four or five times. 
Because faith comes by hearing. And you need to reorganize your life. It takes a long time for a man or a woman to change their minds. It is impossible to change the mind of a man or a woman. If that person is brought up in a specific manner, I tell you, it is only the work of the Spirit that can do that. So, seed of doubt was sown by Eve. Because God said, if surely if you eat of that tree, you'll surely die. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. She looked at that tree and Satan come and deceive and said, Did God really say, say seeds of doubt? Did God really say seed of doubt? She started to wonder about this. This is how Satan worked with us. He sowed the seed of doubt. And she started to wonder about that. Satan was feeding his evil seed. Let me tell you, Satan is trying to seed, sow his seed in every one of us' minds. You need to resist him steadfastly in faith. Now she was pondering on this. The seed, evil seed of doubt was now in her heart. And she started to ponder on that in her mind. <laughs> then, eventually, Satan convinced her to eat of the fruit, forbidden fruit. She ate, and you know what? Big surprise. She always believed God and nothing happened to her. Now the doubt was growing strong. <gasps> nothing happened. <gasps> I, I wonder if God is really such a truthful God, truthful God. Maybe he lied. Nothing happened to me, look. She went to Adam. Look, Adam, the fruit is nice. Nothing happened to me. I think God just wanted to scare us a little bit. If God says something, I tell you, in Jesus' name, he means it. God is not playing with words. I tell you, in the name of Jesus, God is not playing with words, never, ever. When he says something, he means what he says. You will not reverse his words. His words will never be changed. Heaven and earth can pass away, but his words will never, never change. That's why it's important for us, if we want to love, to line up, to take hold of his words, because his words are already blessed. Don't ask God to bless you. Take hold of his word that is already blessed, and you will be blessed. Give God a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she took the fruit, she took the fruit, she gave to Adam, she said, look, nothing happened to me, nothing. I think God was just scaring us. God is not scaring you. God mean what he says. Never forget that. When God says the consequences of sin is death, he means you can come with your grace teaching, false grace teaching, as much as you want to, the consequence of sin is death. You live by grace and you play with sin, I tell you, you'll die. With your grace and all. Because true grace is the God-given divine ability to conquer sin and to say no to sin. That is true grace. Amen. Knowing that God is not judging me where I still struggle and I'm still weak. That's why when I'm weak, I'm strong. Because when I'm weak, I'm inviting Jesus into my weaknesses. And when Jesus comes into my weaknesses, my weaknesses become my greatest strength. That's why the Bible says, when I am weak, I am strong. Because when I discover I'm weak, I invite Jesus into my weakness. And my weaknesses become the greatest strength of my makeup. In the name of Jesus. Lacha lacha salamai. Nekotuluhu sechai sai. When this gospel of mine is preached like you hear it tonight, there will be a whirlwind in religious circles and people will be confused and will run to their Bibles again to discern my name. So how many people today preaches that grace? It's okay, Grace, you can sin, it's grace, it's grace, grace, grace. I tell you, grace 
is the most abused word in religious circles. What is abuse? Abuse is when you use anything, whether it's a car, a word, a person, an animal. If you abuse, use anything. If you use anything for the wrong reason, it's created for a specific or made for a specific purpose. If you use it for any other reason or purpose, that is abuse. So people use grace as a license to sin. It's the most abused word in the religious circles. Satan go next to grace as awesome. The Bible says be strong in the grace that is in Jesus. What is grace? Ask the guy next to you, what is grace? What is grace unto you? Grace is divine ability. Ability that is available to every Christian in Jesus Christ our Lord. Divine ability to conquer evil desires because Jesus has overcome them on your behalf. So that divine ability is in Jesus because as a man, he has conquered on our behalf. In our state, he said no to sin. In our state, he conquered the devil. In our state, he said he refused the temptations of the devil. So that ability is available to you in Jesus. Those who are joined to the Lord is one in spirit with the Lord. Grace is also this. When you fail and you're still weak in your faith, God does not condemn you. He knows your heart. You don't want to sin, but you still make mistakes. You don't want to make a mistake, but you still make a mistake. Grace is in this case covering your weaknesses. Give God a hand. Amen. But grace is not covering the persistent sinner. The willful sinner does not cover him. It covers those who are weak, those who stumble, like all of us sometimes do. Amen. So the book of James is saying, we all stumble in many ways. Why is grace there? One part of grace, divine ability to say no to sin, no to the devil. Amen. Divine ability to do God's will. Amen. Divine favor, divine blessing, divine goodness, divine love, divine forgiveness. That is grace. The other portion of grace is when we're still weak and still growing in our faith. And we stumble because, the, James is saying, we all stumble in many ways. So, grace is supporting us here. Amen. Jesus has paid the price. When you stumble, you made a mistake. God knows your heart. You're not a persistent sinner. You're not a willful sinner. You made a mistake. Even if you make 70 mistakes one day, but it's a mistake, not a persistent sin or a willful sin, grace is covering you. Give God a hand. <laughs> Say to God, to grace is not covering the stubborn, willful sinner, persistent sinner. Such a person need to repeat. Now also, grace is also available to that one. What kind of grace? The grace to repent. To repent is grace. No one can repent in himself. It's impossible. The grace to repent. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. If you do not repent, you will not see the Lord. Repentance is a daily, it's a lifestyle. I live a life of repentance. There came one day in my life when I turned around completely and walked the opposite way than I walked before. That is a one-time repentance. But then, that repentance become a lifestyle. Where I daily lay off the things that's not pleasing to my master as the Holy Spirit show it to me, not condemning me. Say to God next to not condemning me, not judging me, not putting guilt on me, but an awesome heavenly divine desire to do the right thing. Give God a hand. Amen. I tell you, God is awesome. People do not, do not understand grace. They abuse grace. What is repentance? 
Many people see when a person preaches preach repentance, oh, he's preaching brimstone and fire, judgment. The one who preaches judgment is not of God. Judgment on the devil, but not on people. Amen. I preach judgment on the devil. Amen. But not on people. People should repent everywhere. The first sermon that Peter preached after the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost, he preached. The people got struck in the heart, the Bible says. They got struck in the heart. And they asked, Peter, what should we do to be saved? He said, repent every one of you. Can you believe there's some preachers that are today that says it's not necessary to repent anymore? Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you will receive the Holy Spirit as an awesome gift. Give God a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is repentance? Repentance is never guilt that's put on you. That is the devil always. It is not condemnation. It is not judging you. Re true divine repentance is grace strongly at work. Busy saving your soul. Grace to repent is the conviction of the Holy Spirit at work. And it's an awesome desire to lay down evil and to do the right thing. Satan needs to, you need that awesome desire. To do the right thing. No one can do the right th thing if God doesn't give him the desire to do the right thing. No one can repent by himself. Everyone needs grace. That what, what kind of grace? The grace that's available to you in Jesus. Even to repent is awesome amount of grace. Amen? So when a Christian got a wrong perspective of things, he's going wrong direction, deception, whatever the case may be, he needs conviction. In his life. We are people of conviction. A person of conviction is not easily swayed. Because a person of conviction is convicted by the Holy Spirit himself. When God has convicted you concerning something, the conviction is not condemnation as so many people think and preach. Conviction is again an awesome desire to do the right thing. An awesome desire to do the godly thing. In a name of this is awesome. Amen. You're a person of conviction. A person that is indoctrinated by another person, you can sway. You can change his, his, the direction of his course. But a person that's convicted by the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father, you will not, you will not change his course. He will die for that conviction. I say he will die for that conviction. A person that's convicted by God, he's ready to die for what he believes in. What is true conviction? Conviction is to leave the things that are ungodly. An awesome, awesome, willing desire and a joy to leave behind what is not pleasing to God and to take hold and to do the thing that is pleasing to God. That is conviction. Thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is teaching you tonight because so many people teach otherwise. They say, oh, the Lord's going to convict you, meaning there's going to be guilt on you, condemnation on you. God's conviction, God will never condemn you. He will never make you feel guilty. He will not judge you. Because he said, I did not come into the world to judge, but to save. How will you be saved? You need God's grace.